basement Level vibes With another one Another one Straight up Blackness I are I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Registration is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Registration is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benz, Benz, I do it for the love, him not do it for no money, straight up, him attack, educating everybody, big up my friends, and big up my family, turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity, straight up, Benz, cop stands for unity, one people, one nation, one destiny, free up the truth, in the air, even the blind can see, mm. the deaf can hear, the dumb can talk, the crook can walk, boom, I who tell the truth, Mark Benz, cop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit Mark Benscop, straight up from the root Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit Mark Benscop, straight up from the root Mark Benz, we are figured around Grab a seat and sit down Pay attention, education, liberation We are fist and strong Benz, cop the pond, the radio Lively up the program Everybody call somebody And let them turn and tune and pond the radio And cut the boom song We boom it up already, we have to boom it up again Expose and reveal them I who tell the truth Mark Benz, cop, defend the ghetto you Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, Benscop, I do it for the love, him not do it for no money, straight up, him attack, educating everybody, big up my friends, and big up my family, turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity, straight up, Benscop stands for unity, one people, one nation, one destiny, free up the truth in the air, even the blind can see, mm. the deaf can hear, the dumb can talk, the cripple can walk, boom. Hello, this is attorney Shellen Washington owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. If you are looking to have your statutory declaration, have a David of income, identity, damage or loss, passport, loss license, Tenancy agreement, agreement of settlement, power of attorney, last will and testament, and certification of documents, then you need to visit the Alistair Collins firm, located at the Kellyan Mall, 162 Lamaha Street in Georgetown, between Camp and Waterloo Street. Alistair Collins is a commissioner of oaths and a justice of the peace. Make certain you visit him or call for more information at 649 6410 or 685-6448 or 503-1451 and there's adequate parking available. Go down to the Alistair Collins firm and have all of your legal issues settled and brought to the fore. Alistair Collins firm. Contact them at Alistair Collins firm. I step on the 
Well, good evening. It's uh, just a little bit after 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's uh, after 9 o'clock in Guyana. And you know, sometimes uh, folks do get mixed up with the time. They think that I'm on at, what is it? They think that I'm on at um, at 9 o'clock, sorry, 8 o'clock Guyana time. So uh, please uh, uh, don't get too confused with the time. It's 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And just to be specific, it's uh, if you're in New York City or New York, it's 8 o'clock New York time. It's 8 o'clock if you're in Atlanta, if you're in Connecticut, in the eastern part of the United States of America. That's why we say Eastern Standard Time. So 8 o'clock, spread the word. It's uh, the 22nd day of December 2022, it's coming down to that home stretch time, and that's it. So uh, what is that our operator has there on the screen? Ropes and Ben. Do you guys remember? It's over a year since this fire took place. The fire service, the Guyana Fire Service, did its investigations. They promised that they were going to let the public know the origin of the fire. To this day, there has been no report, absolutely no public report, because it is the modus operandi of the PPP to basically not to reveal to the public things that will open their eyes. And so during the course of all these fires and all these different things, guess what Ropes and Ben wanted? They wanted to believe, they wanted their supporters to believe that um, that some folk from the diaspora, in the diaspora, specifically New York, jumped on the plane and did whatever they had to do and flew out back to the country. And so that was the propaganda. That was the message they wanted to send. In fact, they were whistling to their supporters. And so when the fire service did its investigations, it, turned out that there was something else. It could be arson right there, right there, and that is connected to the PPP. Good evening again. My name is Mark Benchop, and welcome to Straight Up. Uh, we are tonight. Oh, yep, I just realized that we have uh, our guest this evening is our guest, are, sorry, J.R. Crawford, no stranger to you guys. He is with us this evening. And uh, we should be joined by Wayne Caesar as well, accountant Wayne Caesar. And of course, we have businessmen slash politicians slash everything with us, uh, J.R. Crawford. I'm told that they are actually in studio. And let me just uh, take the time out to acknowledge all of you. Good evening. Uh, I know it's heading toward that... Um, that moment, that day that a lot of you guys, that day that a lot of you guys, um, you know, enjoy all across Guyana. It's Christmas Day, the 25th of December. And um, whatever it is that you're going to be doing, I hope that you all have fun in doing it. All right. I, yep. Thank you so much, Lemon. We have uh, these folks that are still... Um, their charges are still there, the fictitious charges. They're still, uh, every time they go to court, the prosecutor is not ready. And um, we all know what has happened, that these folks have been slapped with these, um, these charges uh, with no evidence, absolutely no evidence, cannot be convicted in any court of law, uh, except at Freedom House, except at those... Uh, new occupants, those new illegal occupants uh, at the office of the president. So Roxanne Myers uh, and um, Clement Clement Mingo and um, Lowenfield and others, they were wrongfully charged. And we just want to take the time out to uh, 
uh, wish all of these individuals who are wrongfully charged uh, a happy holiday, happy um, Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, whatever it is that uh, they celebrate, or those other individuals who have been wrongfully charged. Uh, Mr. Trevor Ben, former CEO of Guyana Lands and Surveys, uh, thanks for all the changes that you have done there at the Guyana Lands and Surveys. Mr. Trevor Ben, happy holiday to him as well. All right, and we haven't been hearing much about this story with the Vice News report about uh, serious allegations of corruption. Serious allegations of corruption. Nothing at all, no investigations. The guys, the guys at Soku seem to be, it's a, what is considered a political witch hunting organization. Political witch hunting organization where they just go after individuals who are connected to the People's National Congress or the coalition. That is what we, that is what they do. We see it every single day. We see the racism, the racism coming out of Soku where they go after only a particular type of people. Um, and, and having said that, you heard what happened to that lawyer. Um, again, because of her ethnicity, she was actually uh, wrongfully detained and uh, she was ignored by some looney tunes, individuals there at Soku, some so-called cops. You know, a lot of these cops, uh, they're so-called cops for obvious reasons, but we're not going to get into that at this time, other than to say that the private criminal charges that were brought against them, those two Looney Tune cops were actually withdrawn by a Looney Tune DPP. So the DPP now seems to be on a mission. Anyone who's connected to maybe the CIOG, I don't know, but uh, anyone who's connected to the installed regime, uh, I don't know. Oh, it uh, seems to be the perception that she would discontinue the charges. And it is unfortunate that when people are seeking justice in the country, that there's always this sort of impediment, uh, this sort of political, political mischief afoot. And so the DPP has decided to withdraw all the private criminal charges against those two Looney Tune cops at Soku. Soku is being run by a guy who uh, allegedly committed um, a, a serious human rights violations. His name is Kareem Batch. Uh, back in 2002, uh, a 14-year-old boy got his leg shot off. And in fact, he's running around without uh, one of his legs. Compliments uh, based on the allegations of the guy, Kareem Batch, who's now running Soku. Soku is basically a PPP entity, and they're doing the PPP political dirty works by witch hunting. Carl Joseph, I believe, yep, yeah, Carl Joseph, 14 fraud charges. Now, how do they expect a woman like Carl Joseph to walk around with 14 fraud charges or 14 charges? I mean, we know one guy has 15, 15 fraud charges, or 19, sorry. But Carl Joseph, and what is suspicious about what they did uh, with Carl Joseph is that right after she decided to take them to court and exposed some of their illegalities, or that seems to be the allegations of serious uh, illegalities there at GCOM, they decided that they are going to charge. They are going to charge. They are going to charge Carol Joseph and dig 14 charges in her, stemming back from 2016. So read between the line what's going on there. Again, political witch hunting by the DPP, political witch hunting by Soku. Soku is run by Kareem Bach. Um, thank you so much. Sandra Steele and others, good evening. Thank you so much, Ms. Booker. Uh, Kareem Bach, a lot of you guys don't know. He should have been charged. He should have been before the court. He should not have been in uniform. 
uh, after the allegations that he shot off the leg of a 14-year-old boy, a star football soccer player at Burby's High School. Vincent Mandingo Griffith. The young man has never recovered from that incident. It affected him. It affected his entire family. Tana, his father from New Amsterdam, who is uh, Vincent Montgomery Griffith, but the guy, the little boy that they shot his leg off, um, a party of policemen that included Karim Bach. Uh, the allegations uh, at that time was that Karim Bach was actually a shooter. Allegations, that is. There was no charge. There was nothing. In fact, if you guys want more about that story, uh, you can ask um, former senior police officer, Mr. Assistant Police Commissioner, Mr. Paul Slow. He was then commander for B Division in Burbies when that incident took place with the little boy, Vincent Mandingo Griffith, young Griffith in his uh, mid-20s or somewhere thereabout, or late 20s, is currently serving some time in a prison in the United States of America. Um, unfortunate situation. He just basically snapped at people just like that. It affected him. He's 14 years old. Um, you know, it's a sad situation. He's just snapping at people. And a lot, sometimes a lot of folks just don't know why people react to situation. And so he has been given a few years to serve some time in a U.S. prison. Um, he celebrated his birth anniversary the other day. And I, I just don't know what else to say other than the fact that Karim Bach is uh, um, actually head in Suku. And in fact, if there were any sort of um, trial and charges, then there's a possibility he would not have been wearing uniform. But then again, there are lots of other cops who were part of the Phantom Squad, who killed a lot of people. They were part of the Death Squad. Some of them were part of the Black Clothes, and some of them are still in uniform. I guess that is Guyana. We still haven't heard anything much back about this um, allegations of the mayor of Carriveton smuggling chicken. We haven't heard anything about that beautiful Guyana. We haven't heard anything about this beating, and this is from Jumbo Jet. This beating from guys connected to Jumbo Jet. A look what has happened. The headline says the brutal beating uh, the businessman received from the security guards on September 28th. September 28th this year. No allegations. No, I mean, sorry, no investigations. Nothing at all. So these uh, numbskull security guards. Uh, who are hired by some num numbskulls um, and questionable businessmen, and this is what they do without any form of justice. We haven't heard anything back about this little, little this guy. Sorry, I don't know why I always mix up when I say see his photograph and little uh, little this guy uh, Rogers um, slapped up a woman, according to what we saw in the videotape out in bad settlement a couple months back and nothing at all nothing it's gone quiet the pvpc is doing nothing about it no word from the private sector commission and these people who oftentimes have uh, a loud mouth about every and anything just to pacify the ppp we see what they do here right what they did here psc i wish it was just pisss but that's not what it is uh, at least publicly we can't just put that there but it's psc meaning the private sector commission calls on on the resignation of mayor narain appalled and vile religiously offensive state uh, give me a break get out of here get those members out of the uh, public service uh, private sector commission out of the way a uh, bunch of looney tunes but they're not going to say anything they haven't said anything about a guy, uh, in fact, sorry, they're not going to say anything about this because it serves their purpose. Uh, look at the guy who got beaten up and look at the guys them who they work for. Uh, Jumbo Jet connected to the PVP, connected to Air Finale. So the private sector commission guys, those Looney Tunes are not going to say anything. The private sector commission are not going to say anything about this girl, this guy 
um, who should be the former uh, High Commissioner to uh, India, Guyana High Commissioner to India. Um, they're not going to issue a statement about that. They're not going to issue a statement about Claudet Singh. You know, all these things they're not going to issue a statement about. There was a situation at uh, uh, Queen's College with a judge, allegations that a judge uh, um, uttered racial remarks and so forth, racist remarks. They're not going to say anything about that at all. The allegations of major, 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 major uh, corrupt practices by this guy, Jack Deal, they're not going to say anything about that. Cop being accused of corruption and all these manner of things, death threats on this cop, uh, Bascom, they're not going to say anything about that. They're just not going to say anything about that. They're not going to call on this guy, Mark Richmond, to be arrested based on allegations in the murder of paper shorts. The private sector commission, they're not going to say anything about that. They're just not going to say anything about certain things. And that's just what it is. It is a reality. And we've just got to call them out for who they are, a bunch of corrupt individuals in the private sector commission. And speaking of those corrupt individuals in the private sector commission, some of them are the biggest, biggest um, tax thieves they have in Guyana. Some of them don't even pay their taxes. How many of them owe City Hall? 10 million, 40 million, 50 million, 100 million, 200 million. And guess what? City Hall and these, uh, the, these folks, they just don't have any proper way, any legal way to go after those culprits, those tax cheats in the private sector commission. Tax cheats. That's who they are. And those are the individuals who get hundreds of millions of dollars in concessions, your tax paying dollars. But who got to pay the rates and taxes? Poor oh, Auntie Sandra from Sophia. Poor oh, Auntie Drupati from Port Morant. Poor oh, Auntie Gloria or Auntie Crawford from Ituni and so forth. They're the ones who have to pay the rates and taxes. They're the ones that they go after. And take, for example, GPL. If um, a, a little auntie from Sophia owes three thousand dollars in GPL light bill, guess what? Her light gets cut off. Her light gets cut off. But the people in the private sector commission, they could hope owe oh, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and nothing happens to them. We see we we get some early trench crop holes who can't read and write properly, who can't spell properly. And here is what this numbskull, let's, let's put him out there. Look, you get a face, not even a mother would love. You get a jailman face. And look, they get upset. They're getting upset because the truth hurts them. Numbskull, who take you out of jail? Who should have put Jack Dave and all of them in jail? You see, this is the only line they can come with. They have no other thing. They have no other thing to come with than a trumped up treason charge. A man incarcerated for five plus years on a trumped up thing. And this is all these lagubagu, these katahar, these kohi, these chamars, like a sahadir budram, they can come up with. They have nothing else to talk about. They cannot discuss issues. And look, we, we, we usually just throw them in a trench. They cannot discuss issues or anything. Look at this other one, Ramzan Shah. I don't know who Ramzan Shah is, but look at, look at, look at, love. they love to call the names. I wonder if he's part of ISIS. Because uh, speaking of ISIS, uh, maybe Ram, Ramzan Shah can come on this show and let us talk about ISIS. Let us talk about the rebirth of ISIS in Guyana. The rebirth, the re rebirth, sorry, of terrorism in Guyana. If Ramzan Shah wants to come and talk about ISIS, talk about terrorism, let him come on the show. Come on, get out of your basement, you little rattlesnake. Get out of your basement and let us talk. Ramzan Shah, Ramzan Shah, right? Is that who you are? Come on out. And we can see who is a real G-A-C-K-A-O. Actually, he spelled that correctly. And well, after all, he should know how to spell his middle name. If he can't spell his middle name, then something is definitely wrong with Ramzan Shah, who should take time out to come and let us talk 
about the rebirth of terrorism in Guyana under the installed PPP regime. You see what happens? The truth hurts and it hurts them. They don't like to hear the truth and so they come and their bumps raise. We're gonna to get to J.R. Crawford shortly, but I was uh, perusing and these reminder stuff come up on Facebook time and time. And how many of you guys remember EasyJet, the fraudster? Well, Irfan Ali was then Minister of Housing and they were good buddies. They met up in, in Florida, they sat and they spoke about this EasyJet supposed to be flying to Guyana and all manner of things. And this time this guy t out according to the information, t out a bunch of money uh, swindle a bunch of money out of uh, um, some companies and so forth. And, and he's serving time in jail. Here for an Ali friend, easy jet. Anyways, let's take it easy for now. Let's take it easy for now. Uh, there's going to be the stamp. It's going to be out in 2023. John Lewis stamp. Look out for that. You guys should just um, pick up a copy of this, uh, those stamps. We get better things to talk about. The truth hurts them, man. It hurts them big time. Uh, we're going to head over to Studio B with Crawford shortly. But uh, guess what? The PNCR is looking for a new general secretary. According to this news, it says Mervyn Williams, Don Hastings Williams, tipped to be party's general secretary. That was after Gita. Gita actually finally resigned. I don't know when she's going to resign from parliament because I'll tell you guys this. Gita wouldn't be effective as a parliamentarian for the coalition. That's just a fact. It's just not going to happen. All right. Uh, Roystale Ford. Roystale Ford seemed to have a, uh, a good year in terms of whooping up uh, lots of wins in the court. And we are going to be recognizing some people for the, um, for the year and their good uh, political works, uh, legal works or whatever. And the fact that Roysdale Ford put some serious slashes, serious slashes on, serious slashes, serious slashes on, you know who? Serious slashes on the guy who thinks he's bright, Anil Nandalal. Serious slashes in the court on Anil Nandalal. Great work. Good job, uh, Roysdale Ford. I saw Roysdale representing... Um, the mayor of Georgetown, he was out there. Good representation there, uh, Roysdale. And I think uh, there was um, another lawyer there, that youngster um, from West Coast Burbies. Uh, he was there as well. But Roysdale Ford chalked up lots of wins, lots of wins against Anil Nandalal for 2022. All right, let's get over to Studio E. Mr. J.R. Crawford is with us this evening. ISIS, the state of terror. A young man uh, basically walking along, walking along Regent Street. He wasn't stabbed to death. Throat cut, slit his throat. ISIS style. ISIS style. Terrorism style. Mr. Crawford, ISIS state of terror before we get into that good evening to you sir good evening how are you doing good well thank you um what's happening in your neck of the woods on the quarantine region six and so forth well we are seeing uh the selective cleaning in the in certain ndc's the pvp has yet to send a machine in our ndc and some other ndc's that are populated by coalition supporters. So, you know, they're, they're, they're going down that dangerous path of trying to be bullied. And, you know, like I said, something is going to is gonna backfire and they're not going to like what happens after that. Oftentimes they don't like to listen. They don't uh, like to um, be pointed to the signs oftentimes are on the on the screen, the radar, we're getting an echo, maybe I'm not sure where it's coming from. But let's bring another guest on, uh, Mr. Wayne Caesar. Good evening to you, sir. 
Uh, uh, good evening, Mark. Uh, season greetings. Um, good evening to the listening and viewing audience. A pleasant good evening, everyone. Season greetings. Yep, season uh, season greetings to you as well. Uh, Mr. Crawford, we're getting that echo from your end. Um, yeah, we are getting that serious echo from your end, uh, Mr. Crawford. But uh, let's get into the um, let's get into the report of um, coming out of Georgetown Public Hospital. Uh, we see the return of this here every month. Every seems to be the case here. Woman, thirty-eight dies days after giving birth at the Georgetown Public Hospital Cooperation. Mr. Crawford, let's get your take on what's happening here again with maternity deaths on the rise at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Something that was a, a frequent um, a frequent happening back then when the PPP were in office. Now it's uh, they're back in office, albeit through installation, and it is happening rather frequently. Again, your take, sir. One has to look back during the coalition time in office, and we saw pregnancy death was on a sharp decline. And as soon as the PVP got in there, we're seeing the same thing prior to the coalition getting into office. So it's obviously the supervision is not there, the seriousness and the care for fellow Guyanese are not a priority anymore. And most of the stuff that is happening to us, our citizens needs to take the blame. We are not demanding better care or better services from whoever is in office. They were quick to jump down the throats of the coalition government when something is not to their liking. Now, that they have an installed regime in there, cat has gotten their tongues. And if we as Guyanese do not come together and start to demand better from whoever is in office at the time, we are going to be a nation that's going to be suffering. I don't know if it's an ungodly act or what it is. We are seeing so much negatives every day. And one has to wonder if this country is under the wrath of God. And it seems like nobody wants to elevate themselves or nobody wants better services and goods to this country. Everybody is afraid to speak out. Why should I be afraid to speak out when I was born here? When we elect a government or a government is put in office by whatever means, it is there to serve the people and it's there for the nation to go forward and to be better from yesterday. But instead of being better than yesterday, we are getting worse than the year before. Worse indeed. And we are not seeing, you know, the citizens coming out against it. And my thing is that we are too damn racial as a nation. We are looking at hair texture instead of looking at services and goods that are not being given to us. I think it, uh, it, and maybe another day we'll debate it, uh, um, another hour, two hours to debate whether it's racial uh, racial stuff that's happening, racism in Guyana, or just downright stupidity or ignorance, because I can't see why is it an uh, Indian brother who is 10 times darker than I am or you <laughs> or Caesar, Black, 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 black. And the first thing that comes out is, hey, a black man. Uh, we got to revisit that. Mr. Caesar, what do you think is happening? What else is happening in Guyana that's uh, bothering you, sir? Well, I I also want to take a little bite at what just recently occurred at um, the Georgetown Public Hospital. Sure. Um, the nurses were protesting earlier um, in the year, you know, and, you know, there were a lot of um, PPP supporters that were talking down the nurses, indicating that they should fire all of them and bring in nurses and all the different things. But I would just like to say that a few years ago, you know, I had a family member who was at the G, 
at the Georgetown Public Hospital. And I went and did a visit there. And that place is just totally horrendous. Um, there's not enough um, funds being allocated for the upkeep of that hospital. They need better equipment. Nurses need to be better equipped to take care of the patients, including the doctors also need to be equipped. Um, the PPP doesn't care about, you know, patient care. They more care about infrastructure. And, you know, it's reflective. It's, re it's reflective of this woman, just 38 years old, losing her um, life in child's birth. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's unheard of today. You know, because we have so many mechanisms that's now in place that you hardly hear outside of Guyana, you know, of people dying. Even poorer countries than Guyana, we don't have people dying in child's birth at the rate, you know, people have been dying in child's birth in Guyana. Because I've seen over the over the past few years, I've seen a few, I've seen a few teachers also, if I recall vividly, that um you know, lost their lives the same way. And and it's a shame. It's just a reflection of um, the government that's in power now. Under the coalition, I didn't see this. Now that I'm taking sides, you know, I just didn't see this, you know. I mean, Life is secondary, not primary, it's secondary. These guys in the install regime are not concerned about lives. They're not concerned about people. They're just concerned about corruption and all sorts of things, murder under this regime. Uh, what we saw under the coalition government was an improvement, a, a vast improvement in the health sector. Uh, JR can attest to that. There are health centers that were basically run down under the PPP, uh, maybe Kildonan, maybe they're at, um, at other villages out in the quarantine. They were, they were rehabilitated. Uh, Port Morant Hospital, we all we are, we know that hospital very well. Uh, it was actually ran better and repaired under the coalition. Linden Hospital, Georgetown Hospital, West Dem Hospital, Sudi Hospital, you name it. All of these hospitals, that maternity death declined under the coalition. And now look what is happening. Almost every week there's a death, a maternity death. Almost every week. Shame on the PPP regime. Shame on them. Gentlemen, let's move on. I want to show the state and then we're going to get straight into it. But just let's stick a pin before we get to that tape. Uh, young man walking down Lincoln Street got his note, uh, his throat slit. His family now feel that they're in danger. Um, sorry about that. That's another story. His family feel that they're in danger. Uh, they basically, relatives of murdered vendor fear they've been marked for death. So how many of them are going to get the no slip, ISIS style in Guyana? What do you guys uh, think about this here, J.R. Crawford? Mark, my, my conclusion on this is still pending on the fact that not too much information is out there for you to really get a clear sight if there is on the world connection or what it is. So I have, at this moment, I have reserved. $400 million, $400 million. They're not showing you the picture of the lady that supposedly lost this money. $400 million in gold. How come they're getting all these things at their home? And, you know, obviously, yes. our world got to be involved. It could possibly. Right. Something, something is, not, is not adding up when you, you know, you have that magnitude of a robbery, but you can't name the entity or the individual. And why would someone be hoarding so much gold at their home? It's that is not a normal behavior for law-abiding citizens. Should be a crime, right? Because it's you know you can't get more than two million dollars in your on or three million on your possession walking the streets. So how are you going to run around with four hundred million at home? You know, certainly was a crime. ISIS seemed to be back on the rise in Guyana. They've got to be careful. You got to be careful. You see. You see, you know, Mark. I know the woman's name as Goberdan. We discussed that weeks ago, months right. ago, right here. Uh, when it happened, the police were reluctant to release the names of the individual, Miss Goberdan, and all these matters. There should be an investigations into her. 
uh, and why it is four hundred plus million dollars. But we will show her photograph again maybe tomorrow. But Mr. Caesar, your take, please. My take on this is that first of all, you you have you have these um, incidents where goal is not even hitting the guy on a goal board, which it should be hitting the goal board. It's being stored in people's house. And then with the police, um, with the Ghana police force not um, surrendering or letting the name of this woman um, be known. Look, I'm going to be honest here. You know, it just paints a picture, you know, that <laughs> the government has ties to this. I'm going to be frank. I'm going to be straight up. These are all people who are tied to the government. That's why you can't get any information, any um, you know, relevant information on them. And then going back to this young man that was that got his throat slit in Regent Street, you know, when I heard when I heard of what has happened, you know, and that he had met his demise, you know, I was saddened because he, he was executed. He was executed. Whether it is that he would have called names or what we could call it on the world or whatever we want to call it. You understand? But I I am of the opinion, all right, that these things are happening because of the government of the day. And I stick by that opinion. I'm 100% on that. Nobody could get me to change that. This government, all these things are happening. These people are a reflection of the government that we have in power right now. Yep. Sorry about that. You guys got to learn the art. Whenever you see me missing off the state, uh, the screen, y'all got to continue and take over as host, man. Y'all can't just sit down there looking like y'all from part of the install regime and know what we're doing. You know, keep on. You guys, you guys have been at it for a while. A lot of birds, a lot of birds whistling, man. Like Crawford, what, what going on with this board business? You got to talk to us a little bit because if I was there, I would have probably purchased a couple of birds from you. All those birds whistling. Well. You know, that's those are my 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 toys, yeah. Mark. You know, coming back to um, add to what Mr. Caesar was saying there. What is happening here in Guyana? We are not seeing an aggressive approach from all the opposition parties. They are responsible to keep the government of the day in check. What? And what, if we not, one second, Mr. Crawford. Did you say opposition parties? Yes, all the little ones, all those things were making noise back in oh, 2020. Okay, okay. but do we, right? do we have opposition anyways. When you right. when you have the government of the day bucking the, the, the law, you, the people are going to follow suit. And there goes the, the, the whole system in that Ghana is in now. We we would not expect a better country or the citizens to respect each other. Because if the government does not respect the, the nation, what do you think going to happen? We are in a situation where it's money grabbing and nobody cares who knows how they got this illegal money as long as they got the money. And the citizens themselves are not taking responsibility to say, you know what? We are not going to allow a selective few, less than 100 people, to cause us so much grief and stress while they are living high in the hog. And again, it comes back to our, our racism that has been rearing its head. We need to come together as one and fight for, you know, for a better country, for better, for better communities, so we can attract international people, so we can, our products or our skills can be employed by foreign nation. But when we behave as we don't care, we are selfish, the whole community sucks, and the international people or the selective few here gets rich, and we are not progressing, and we are putting all this burden and debt on our children that are, on grandchildren that aren't even be born as yet. So everybody here is so selfish that they're not looking at down the road two or three generations 
what will happen to this nation. We are all consumed about how big our bank accounts must be. And no one is thinking what the retribution is going to be for them or for the country. And, and, and a lot of a lot of showboat individuals in the opposition, that's what they are, a bunch of showboats, majority. It's of just them. a waste of time, buddy. That's more than it looks as though they're in the beauty contest or something no, like that. I don't I, I mean I yeah. I don't wanna step on your toes in the show. But when you have an opposition leader running on to a program that is laced with a lot of racist and, and untrue remarks about the coalition when they were in office or the coalition supporters or base now, why the hell an opposition leader is going to a basic PPP program? You wouldn't find a PPP minister coming in onto a coalition-based program. Why are we disrespecting our party members by making foolish decisions that are going to hurt us? We are not doing the coalition any favors by crossing the line and going into these, what I must say, self-centered, egotistical people Notish programs, that's what it's about. That's I, I was totally that surprised they, when yeah. someone called me and said, Hey, you know, Norton is going on Freddy Kasu. I said, uh, What we, we, we just don't discuss those. Uh, if you notice, we don't even call the names, we don't discuss. No, yeah, but I am, uh, I, but I, I, get, I, I get, I get, I, I get am angry. Point. I get I'm your angry. Point. It's a waste can I, of can time. I make this point? Can I sure, make this a, point? But before you do, it's a waste of time. They think that they're doing some service. They're building other people's platform. Uh, they're more, they're quick to jump to do that, to appease other individuals. And that's just what they do. But Harvey Norton got to know what he's up to. Remember, he's strategizing, right? No, no, no. Listen, I am angry because when you have private citizens carrying the fight for equality across the nation and you have elected people who are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It pisses you off to see that the ones that, you know, run and have all these false promises that they are going to be there for the plight of the people are not, are not capable of even running a good farm. You have opposition people who are calling private citizens and saying, look, look what your, your leaders are doing. How can they be duped to go on a platform that are cursing out or platforms that are cursing out the very party you guys support? Are there anybody with any sense or any discussion to make sure that certain things are kept in check? Uh, those guys, those guys uh, in, in the opposition, most of them just don't know what they're doing. But look, Crawford and Caesar and lots of other people look at it from the brightest side of life, uh, that the bright side of life that... Um, they have a PNC Congress coming up next year. It is due next year. Definitely, it's going to be it's going to be a tug of war for that con um, Congress and if they don't want to hold it. The people have just got to uh, do what they got to do because we have heard a lot of talks, 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 and less action. We saw a lot of um, during that time. We see a lot of um, hairdressing uh, being done, makeup, and uh, you know that's not politics. That's not the sort of politics that we need. Uh, we don't need beauty, beauty. Con it's not a beauty contest. It's not a, a run race to see who can have more shows, who can talk a bunch of crap all the time. And people on the ground, they're not getting the sort of representation they should be getting. Well, that thing is still there. You know, this is still there. These guys who are in there seem to be in la la land, so to speak, and not taking advice from people. Their PR sucks. It seems as though all of them are off just trying to build a base for themselves. Uh, with selfish motives. Most of them, that's what they're about. Let's get into this thing here, guys. So I'll get your opinions on it. Um, let's get into this particular situation. Uh, this is a young man and his family attacked, um, allegedly, um, by security guards of a company connected to the PPP, sheriff security we're hearing. And then there is some guy, America Security. All these uh, security agencies should be shut down, if you ask me. These private security firms should be shut down. It's basically, uh, um, they're, they're basically companies with a bunch of gunmen to protect their set of folks, them and, uh, and so forth. Gunmen. It's going to run. It's going to be some serious problems in a country with these uh, sort of situations. Now, hear what happened to these people. 
inside Providence Police Station, inside Providence uh, Police Station. And there's a guy connected to um, Guy America Security Agency or firm. Name is Reyaz. And, uh, and again, Reyaz, I don't know who Reyaz is, but the company obviously is connected to um, Irfan Ali. Who knows? Maybe CIOG. Who knows? Listen to this tape, guys. Guy America's son, send me security and put beat up my body. Lash up in the face of the gun. Now we come now, we need money to come out today now, and I see them over by the gas station there. And I take up my phone, and I go and video them because the police stand around and arrest them. You understand? And they run over me, they run me over from the road, right, with my phone, and they say they want to take away my phone. In the station they come, right? In the station they come with me phone. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on. In the station, in the station they come. Right? Put up. Right? How do you inspect the down? You inspect up. Right? Does he have a sense of what? And then what else? Does he have a sense of what? That's a Mr. Stanley. That's a Mr. Stanley. You know? You know? No, no, no. How much rounds was this charge? All right, hey. uh, come, get, get up. up. Just get, get up. up. Get up, brother. Get up. 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 Arm my arm. Yeah. Brother, the gentleman was this this arm. Mommy, mommy. No, let's sit down. 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 Mommy, you got to have one. Mommy, 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 this is a I did it. 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 I Please give me something for fun, you know? And I come in, you to the man, I get to release. I want to 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 get to release. I to so they're running. Yeah, so we're running. Yeah. 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 No, we're not going to security for us. Yes. 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 No, sir. Oh, God, why? Oh, God, why? That is a security bomb. That's how we're running the station here. Police are still 
All right, uh, you guys saw that for yourselves. Um, you know, security company, so-called security, uh, beating up people, threatening them, rushing them into a police station, um, attempting to kill them in a police station. Nothing has come out of it. Uh, if I had my way, all those security, private security agencies, questionable ones would have been shut down, all of their licenses uh, taken away from them but they're just there to serve the purpose for the most part of the underworld. Let me get you guys take on that, please. Jay, are you taking a stop? Look, whatever we are seeing there is a product of the behavior of the government. Some of the, the, the police may want to do a proper job, but their hands are tied because of the way the citizens are allowing the government to operate. Yes, we do have some rogue officers, but because of the vindictive behavior, many good officers are silent. And because of this, our society suffers. Again, the citizens have to take the blame for what is going on in this country because we are not a united nation. We are divided, be a race, religion, political, whatever the reason. We are too selfish, we're too self-centered as a nation to understand that if we don't come together, all of us will suffer one way or the other. And eventually, this will lead to severe bloodshed against many people and innocent people are going to get hurt. I've been saying this for three years and I'm seeing it that is coming where violence will come into play against people who are being oppressive and the straw will, there is going to be a straw that will break the camera's back. It's All only right. a matter of time and it's a short time coming. And the sign, the sign is indeed the sign is on the wall. Nobody's calling for violence. Nobody wants violence. But we have seen it before. We are seeing it again. And these things happen only when the PPP is in office. Only when the PPP is in office. They got to stop for the nonsense. These private security firms, uh, they've got to be investigated early in the program. I did mention uh, Jumbo Jet. Jumbo Jet. Uh, no stranger to controversy. Jumbo Jet, nothing has come out of this at all. But let's get to uh, Mr. Caesar. And, and I know individuals who are investigating this Jumbo Jet situation and all these Jumbo Jet stuff, they get a bunch of different things that are being investigated outside of this here. But let us get Mr. Caesar's position on what just transpired on that videotape. Your take, sir. Yeah, so Mark, um, my position first of all is that that young um, God was with him because had he not run into that police station or a police station was not in the vicinity, he would have been murdered. Point blank, he would have been murdered. These security firms in Guyana, they seem to be growing. And um, they need to be vetted very, very carefully because what they, what they seem to be is um, subsidiary, military subsidiaries of the PPP. These guys go out and they do the jobs for the government. So when I see normal Guyanese citizens turning up dead you know we are back to the 90s again early 2000s with these state ordered um executions of Guyanese citizens this need to stop um this is directly tied to the government i know the international community is looking I know that they're seeing, and I'm forced to say this, whenever the knees happen to be on the necks of black people, 
there's always, the response is always not slow. The response is always extremely slow. And I agree with Mr. Crawford. There is going to be bloodshed at some point because citizens are going to grow tired. You cannot be paying the government your taxpayers' dollars to in turn have that same money be used to murder your children, your family, and your friends. Let's be frank. Let's be honest here. What's going on in Guyana is becoming very, very unbearable. It is obvious you don't have um, dunces on there. We are seeing it. Okay, Mr. Ali, Mr. Jack Dio, I don't know if this would ever get to y'all, but you guys have blood on your hands, man. You guys have blood on your hands, right? And you guys need to stop this and you need to stop it immediately. The opposition, on the other hand, you guys have to come out and you guys have to condemn. You guys have to condemn these actions when you see it. You got to come out and you got to speak to these actions when you see it. This guy getting chased into the police station. Another man chasing him into the station with a gun. Now, what also that depicts to me is that the police have familiarity with these people. Now you have a man come running into the station with a gun. Once the guy would have gotten to the stairs of the station, the gun should have went back where it belongs. I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch to see what comes out of this. And again, while I do this, I also want to state that still no protection for Mr. Dion Basco. Mr. Ali, you are complicit. You can go around the country building house and doing all these things. You are complicit. And this Dion Bascom hits you, runs very deep. It runs very deep. And friends of yours is involved in this. Listen, I'm not on this program here to minus anybody or to act as if I'm scared of anybody. You know, you guys know what you're doing. And if you guys continue to marginalize and murder people in Guyana, especially Afro-Guyanese, there is going to be some repercussions. All right, uh, Crawford is back with us, and we just want to make it uh, pellucidly clear that nobody is advocated for any, for any sort of violence in Guyana. People are merely saying read between the lines, look what is happening. Um, and um, of course, there are allegations that friends of, uh, mind you the word, allegations that friends of Irfan Ali are actually involved in the death of paper shorts and uh, threatening the life of uh, Detective Sergeant Bascom. Allegations, I want to spell it out clear across this, uh, this stream. But Mark, but Mark, let what, me make what, it clear. What, what, one second, sir. And uh, nobody's saying that they that they want bloodshed. Nobody's calling for violence. We all want peace. We all want harmony in the country. But based on how things are operating right now, don't be surprised if things just go helter-skelter in the country. We want to avoid that. We're not promoting that, but we want to avoid it. It looks as though these guys in the install regime have a blind eye, or they're deliberately provoking people to reach to the next level, which we shouldn't. But go ahead, Mr. Caesar. You were saying something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, Mark. And that's why you have these security um, companies in place. Because if the police refuse to do what they're ordered to do, then the security companies will do it. You know, the security companies will be the one to do it. Uh, because a lot of them have uh, dead squad members. It's basically a... Um, a death squad group, so to speak, where the PVP give their cronies and their supporters gun licenses to just walk around and, and intimidate people. It's got to stop, though. But Mr. Crawford did say that the people aren't standing up for their rights. Sometimes you can't necessarily blame the people. I'm not saying that the people shouldn't stand up for their rights. But you got all those politicians in the opposition who are being paid to stand up and defend and represent the people. They're MIA. 
Most of them are missing in action. There are a few of them who are working, yes, and we say kudos to them. We're not talking about the beauty pageant ones, them, and, and the ones who love to only sit on social media and blah, 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 blah. Uh, people want action on the ground. People want representation on the ground. Um, Mr. Crawford, what's up, what are some of the sentiments expressed by the people in Region 6, especially with this 8% increase? And now we're hearing that the soldier is going to get... Um, this is what the soldiers are going to get. The soldiers are going to get, on top of the 8% increase, they're going to get this. As such, Irfan Ali announced that all soldiers who received land allocations will get free steel and cement through the regime's housing support initiative. Of course, these things, the steel and cement, are coming from government controlled businesses, friends of the government. And the prices for these things will be jacked up about 50 times more. Mr. Crawford, take a bite of that, please. Mark, all this free stuff that the government is touting out there is total nonsense. It's a way to pill for money. Look, everybody here was jumping up for joy saying that they got a raise. When they do the calculations and the taxes have come out, They've gotten nothing. Some of them are, mo are, are were moved into a different tax bracket, which is going to affect them. These people did not take the time to understand that they were being played for fools. And now it's sinking in. And, you know, they're so ashamed. Some of them who were um, on social media hyping this 8% have now realized that they made themselves a fool. And the very people now are seeing that they are still at actually at the same salary base. We 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 take time to do funky stuff, but when it take when it's time for us to sit and, and think things through that will affect us in our lives and to improve us, we don't have the time and the patience to do it, and that that hurts the nation because. We must be responsible for each other uh, and to, you know, to build our communities. We are not wanting to go through the rigors to make sure that when things are thrown at us, it must benefit us. Instead of it, we are, we, are, you know, we are going on a buddy system or a crumb system. And when we realize that we are being used, we mumble in shame or in fear and we stay in the corner. And that is a problem because we are always looking for a handout or we are looking for an easy street to earn a lot. And that's what's throwing us backwards as a nation. We are not looking for us to be on a railroad track when it comes to the law to make us a better state. We are always trying to upend each other by getting into a hustle. And that's, that's you know, in a nutshell, why we will always be the last nation in the Caribbean. And again, Our mentality isn't changing. We are not educating ourselves with the right information. We are more interested in parties and, you know, showing up on big houses and all this great stuff, things that aren't important. And yet we are complaining that we don't have a proper lives and the cost of living is killing us. Well, uh, Congress Place, they have um, the Green Lime coming up. The Green Lime is back. The Green Lime is back. Uh, hope I do my know. Green Lime in the back of my yard and between my coconut trees. The Green Lime is back. at, um, and We wish them all the best. I know they got to raise money and so forth. But I hope it's not going to be the kind of um, stuff that we heard the condemnation about the reggae shows uh, under the sheet and them kind of stuff that. But... Um, Mr. Caesar, yeah, what's, yeah. Next? what's bothering you? Yeah, so so Mark, I wanna I wanna pick off pick up where uh, Mr. Crawford just left off there. I wanna look at it, you know, merely from um, an accounting perspective. Now you're gonna give to the people an eight percent raise, okay? First of all, the raise, if you're gonna give them eight percent, it should have been retroactive to the beginning of the year. And if you can give them 8% now, you could have given them 8% to start the year. 
Okay, so you just give them a raise of 8%. Yet we get to Christmas here, and um, most Guyanese don't have any real disposable income to spend, you know. They're digging into the monies, they're digging into the monies that they actually have to pay their bills with. So a lot of people is going to be in dire need come January. A lot of Guyanese is going to be in dire need. You know, I, I was thinking about Christmas and really how I wanted to celebrate it. And I'm just going to basically go to church on Sunday and just kind of like come home and spend some time in prayer. I can't go ahead and, and celebrate a big Christmas because I think of my, my brothers and sisters in Guyana and I think of their children that they have to provide for. You know, and, and how this government, the posture of this government, when it comes to the human capital in Guyana, this government is just into infrastructure and, and making a big show out of high-rise buildings and new roads. I'm not saying that that's not important, but in order to build a country, you have to start with your human capital, making your people more skilled, making them more educated, um, I think the PPP really needs some real proper advice. I think they're very weak in that area. Weak and beyond indeed. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the opposition MPs are missing in action. They don't represent the people properly. We hardly see them. We hardly hear from them. And then they oftentimes get annoyed when people call them out for lack of representation. But 2023, a lot more of them will be called out. Um, it wasn't so long ago. It's the same. They're jumping and, and hollering about the, um, that's the PVP vagabonds. They're jumping and hollering about uh, respecting the military and so forth. Wasn't it not so long ago that Jack, you know, and this is how all of them feel about the military. When they link up with the military and come into your homes and start kicking the doors and so forth, and this is Jack Dale. That is what they're talking. Now they're suddenly giving this impression like they love the people in the military. They care about the people in the military. They don't. They just do not. It's a political ploy. That is what this is about. And when they're talking about, um, going back to what they're saying here, Irfan Ali, what they're saying here, that the soldiers who got land and so forth, these are the same PVP folks who... Um, below soldiers land up on the East Coast, Demerara, when there were this um, joint service housing scheme out there where lands would have been given to ex-soldiers, military officers, and so forth. And the PPP took away all those land. They chased the people off the land. I know about that on the East Coast of Demerara, somewhere around in the vicinity of um, Melanie Damashana. Um, I think that's where it is. But now we're hearing free steel. Where are they getting the free steel from? Obviously, the private sector commission folks, those vagabonds are going to benefit. So if the steel costs an actual dollar, they're going to inflate it to maybe $50. And that is how they're going to indeed steal the taxpayers' money. So they're announcing that the soldiers are going to get free steel and free cement and all these sort of things. And nobody's monitoring it. Now, I saw something and uh, our operator put it on the screen. In the Village Voice, and guys, go out and get your copies of the Village Voice. It says, and this is coming from, uh, who wrote this? Well, this is a statement by Roysdale Ford, Senior Counsel. He's saying, Irfan Ali salary bonus announcement not worth the paper it is written on. He needs to focus on all Guyana and not one Guyana. That is coming from Roysdale Ford. All of Guyana and not just one Guyana. I did ask the question to Mr. Um, Mr. Crawford earlier. What are some of the things that people are talking about on the quarantine? Obviously, the PVP is not making it. Obviously, the opposition is fast asleep for the most part. But what are the people talking about, sir? People are getting tired because they're underrepresented. They're frustrated. They're fed up. Look, a pound of foreign leaf milk went from 680 to 1025. Just go for it. That, just a pound of milk. And you know we're going to use more than that per week, a family of four or six. And yes, they're complaining, but many would repeat the same mistakes year after year by supporting the same political folks who don't give a damn 
and who just want to line their pockets. And point in case where the political structure or leadership don't really want to answer to the people who actually support them. Look at the general secretary position of the PNC. That individual, and I'm speaking politically here, went AWOL for months. But yet, yet they were on social media on a daily basis, consistently. Here comes Parliament after the recess, and that individual just shows up in Parliament. That is total disrespect to the people that support that political party that she is represent she is sent to Parliament through. Yet the leader is saying it's a private and can't discuss the issue. The PNC is not a private entity; it's a public entity. It's supported by the people of this country a mere 200 and something thousand adults. You don't play around with 200 and something thousand people's voices. You have a, a, a general secretary who is not there, who hasn't grown the party by one single membership. You're doing a disservice to a great majority of the people, 50% of the voters. So we are underrepresented as a people. And not only is the PNC responsible for its supporters, it's also responsible for all Guyanese because a political party is supposed to stretch its arms around every single citizen of the country and not just party affiliates. When you're orchestrating things for just your supporters, it means that you're not the party of the people. And these are these are behaviors that we need to start to change. We start we need to put forward inclusive behavior. And we have to show more maturity as leaders. If you cannot show the maturity, you need to be yanked out or do the honorable thing and step away from it because you're not there for self. So if you want to get rich and be selfish, go find an individual company and do it there. But not at the expense of the nation. And that is why I'm saying the people are to be blamed for this nonsense that's going on that is hurting the whole country. Our resources are being used as private resources. We are not getting better. As a nation, we are still in the 20th, 20th century mode and we expect to be competing. We are an oil producing nation, so we have a little bit more income coming in. We haven't seen any diversification in the agricultural sector, so we can be more um, self-sufficient in providing food for our nation and export. We are not seeing anybody tackling the gold board. Numbers have fallen. We are not seeing anybody coming up with ideas that we should start to have a gold reserve to strengthen our, our, our dollar value. We're not seeing an intervention of the international bodies with, this, with a sharp spike in crimes of all nature, domestic and public out there. We're not seeing the international bodies who are lending monies that are not reaching down to the, the poor people having severe dialogue with both the opposition and the, the government that received the money to make sure that the money is spent where it should have been and not on private entity. We are not seeing international bodies condemning the PPP for bringing out a private sector budget instead of being a public servant budget. We are not seeing the international bodies harping on this administration who they put in power to make sure that the young generation, the toddlers and the old folks are cared for. We're not seeing monies going into the, the, the security sector. We're not seeing monies into the school. We're not seeing monies going into the health sector. All we're seeing is death, murder, blood. That's all it is. It's like 
these who these who are in office would want to see a depleted population so they will have more in the kitty for themselves. It looks as though they're just running on blood and blood and blood and not here. We're looking at the time, Mr. Crawford. I know you can go on and on about these things happening. And I know you're saying the people are not coming out. The people want to come out. People went out and they voted for people to represent their interests. And therefore, the people want to see those quote unquote leaders, those members of parliament, to be out there to represent their interests. They got to go out and represent the people's interests. This is not just jumping on social media blah, 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 for a couple of days, couple of minutes, and then come off and blah, blah, blah again. People want real representation. And real representation is not waiting for when something happens, then you jump up and you show up and you say you're there, and that's it. That is not proper representation. You've got to be there. You've got to be constantly, you've got to be digging up on things. You've got to keep the, uh, the installed PPP regime on their toes. You can be reactive. These guys in the opposition, for the most part, they are reactive. A lot of them are very, very emotional. They're very touchy. And, and, and some of them might be looking right now. But then again, leadership is up for grabs next year for the PNC. Uh, they will be looking for a new leader. Whether they will elect a new leader or they re-elect what they have right now, I don't know. What I do know is that the opposition needs strong, strong leadership to confront there's these vagabonds in the installed, these racists in the installed PPP regime. Mr. Caesar, very briefly, your closing remarks, please. Yeah, Mark, you said strong leadership. Leadership would only be as strong as the support team that surrounds it. That being said, you know, um, I think that, you know, the opposition need to, you know, come out more. There's a lot to educate um, their constituency on. You know, there's a lot that's going on in Guyana right now that, especially from a financial perspective, that as I said before, you know, many of the people alive today, their children and their grandchildren is gonna be paying the price for that. While the leaders of today is gonna go walking away with their pockets filled. You know, um, it's to me, everything lie upon the people because they, I, I feel like a lot of Guyanese there, they're sitting back, you know, they have a posture of sitting back and waiting, you know, thinking that someone is going to come and save them from this regime. This is not going to happen because what the regime is doing right now, they're satisfying all the needs of the international um, community. So therefore, if somebody, if somebody's mouth is at the soup bowl and the soup is falling, in, they're not going to remove their mouth. That meaning that the international community is not going to remove the PPP. The Guyanese people will have to come out and vote. The opposition will have to be stronger. You know, they have to be on the ground. I know we always say boots on the ground, but we have to mean it. We have to literally execute. We just can't talk about it. Lots you know? of things. Too much talking indeed with these guys in the opposition. I hope Many. in 26, it's not going to be too much talking. A lot of these people are in positions, but they don't know how to represent people. A lot of them have just been picked, have been chosen to just sit there. They don't know their responsibilities. They get very touchy. They think it's a fashion show. Yeah. Your, your closing remarks, please, quickly, because we really have to go. Thanks. Mark, we as a nation need to look at other nations. Look at what happened in Sri Lanka. They were being bled by just a family. They didn't fire shots, but they got them out. And they got them out of the country. Unfortunately, they ran away with some of the money, sure. But we need to start to wake up as a nation and get out there. When it's for rum drinking or, or it's going to the mall or cricket, we find the resources, the time to run to these places. Why aren't we finding time to do better for ourselves and our future generations? But again, when it comes to our own well-being, 
we don't have the consistency to go after it. We as a nation, we are educated, we have, we have the tools, we have the internet. You don't have to be into a university to be educated on, on what is good for you and what is not. We must use the opportunity now before it's too late when we have no or we have a depleted resource supply to improve ourselves, our, our communities, our country, so we can have a better way of living and also able to contribute to other nations to help other people. Guyana could have helped the whole Caribbean basin, for starters. We can't even help ourselves. We have a dying sugar industry, yet the public servant who does so much got crumbs, but we pump billions of dollars back into the sugar industry for what only God knows. Why can't we join hands as a nation and go out there and if it is a reason that the PNC and the PP are the reason for us this way after 60 years, then let's take a dive and go into the unknown and let's see what happens. We may or may not become a better nation. It is time now for us to start to attack these political people who are destroying our country. When I say attack, the first thing to do with a person who has been elected and they are not serving a purpose is to stop listening to them. When they are in the area, stay in your yard. Do not go. Eventually, they will have to be kicked out. And when you attack somebody mentally, it's worse than physically. These people yeah. are in there abusing us, laughing at our nation. You get old people who have flooded kitchens, who have lost stuff. Where are they going to replace these things from? We you have them. young children with a depleted and dilapidated healthcare system walking around in filth laden water going to school. Under under the PPP or children, all Guyana. Children had to cross you know, in, in the new time. forests. Looking take the off time. the clothes, put them in a plastic bag to go cross the mud, then to go to the neighbor's yard to wash out their skin and put on their clothes to go to go to school. When this is something that in today's society with all this oil money, we can't do something proper for a younger generation. We got to stick a pin on that, Mr. Crawford. We really have to go. Uh, oil Guyana, billions of dollars uh, run out of the country. Uh, and guess what? The kids don't have proper schools. They don't have proper roads. And if something is being done, it's always a kickback for the regime. They don't mean anything that they do. They can't run a country. It's all about corruption and racism and all manner of things. And now we notice that uh, there is, according to information science, that ISIS, ISIS-like operations are back in Guyana, returned to Guyana. But let me just thank these two gentlemen for being on with us this Thursday night. And I'm sure you guys may not be on with us tomorrow night, but let me take the time to wish both of you and all of our listeners uh, a happy holidays to those of you who celebrate Christmas, a Merry Christmas, and those of you who celebrate Kwanzaa and other holidays, uh, events, um, religious um, events, happy holidays to all of you. Mark, happy holidays to all our listeners who have been with us over the year. You and Mr. Caesar, same, and be safe. As for myself, I have taken Christmas off of something that I celebrate. As you know, it's my father's uh, death anniversary on the 25th. So I, I use it as a day to just reflect on, you know, what his life was and what it meant to the poor people. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mark Marcel Crawford, senior counsel, died on the 25th of December, the father of uh, J.R. Crawford, as somebody that I knew personally as a little boy. Uh, he was a disciplinarian in the entire area, in the entire country. He represented Guyana as a cyclist, as a lawyer, uh, one of the most competent, not like some of the 
Chihuahua lawyers we see here today. I'm not knocking on the lawyers. There's some bright young lawyers we have in Guyana. We still have a lot of Chihuahua lawyers. Um, and most oblige your worship. Thank you, your worship. And they're done. They're out of court. Marcel Crawford, a lawyer indeed to be remembered. And we salute him on the 25th of, um, of December, his death anniversary. But we've got to go, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Caesar, 30 seconds. You wanted to say something quickly, sir? Yeah, sure, Mark. Um, so many returns to you and Mr. Crawford and to all our listeners and viewers. Happy holidays to you guys. I love all you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys in 2023. And we're going to continue this fight. We're not going to give up. We love all right. you. Yep. We'll have some bigger boxing gloves and some better representations in the opposition. Those sleeping beauties will wake up finally. Those who feel like some bites and take a quick picture and put it on Facebook. And all the crap got to stop for 2023. Nobody hates you guys, you know. Just go out there and represent the people. You're being paid to do that. This is not a panhandling business. You're being paid as parliamentarians. You're getting money to do that. Uh, you've been paid handsomely to do that. You guys get duty-free concessions, all matter of things. You know, if you don't like what you're doing, just get out, give it to somebody else, and go and cut cane, or go in the bauxite industry, or go and board a market and, and sell planting, or guinea, or something. Gentlemen, we've got to go. Or... Or Crawford, the next time you come back up, talk to us a little bit about those birds. People want, somebody text me, they want birds to buy. All right? They want birds to buy. If you're selling birds, let us know what it is about. Okay, will do. All right. Good night. And for now, um, I've got to go. I thank you guys all um, for tuning in with us. Hopefully, we'll be back tomorrow uh, right here on 107. 107.1 FM. We've got to pray for Guyana. Uh, serious prayers for Guyana. Roysdale Ford is correct. Senior Council is a member of Parliament. Um, says here, here for Nali's salary bonus announcement, not worth the paper it is written on. He needs to focus on all Guyana, not one Guyana. All, all Guyana, not one Guyana. We'll leave on that note. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, like I've said, hopefully. Uh, same place, same time on 107.1 FM. God bless you all. See you. Hello. This is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. Basement, level vibes, with another one, another one, straight up, blackness I are, aye, I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, radio station is the truth, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root, Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, Benscop, I do it for the love. Him not do it for no money. Straight up, him attack, educating everybody. Big up my friends and big up my family. Turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity. Straight up, Benscop stands for unity. One people, one nation, one destiny. Free up the truth in the air, even the blank and see. Mm. The deaf can need the dumb can talk, the cripple can walk. Boom. I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. 
More friends, we are figured around. Grab a seat and sit down. Pay attention. Education, liberation. We are fist and strong. Benz cop the pond, the radio lively up the program. Everybody call somebody and let them turn and tune and pond the radio and cut the boom song. We boom it up already. We have to boom it up again. Expose and reveal them. I who tell the truth. Mark Benz cop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz cop, radio station is the truth. Mark Benz cop, straight up from the root. Mark Benz cop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benz cop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz cop,